I was definitely a bastard. I'll tell you that much. I agree. <laughs> yeah, get fucked. Meet anyone new, I demand you bow. <laughs> Alright, i just tell you guys, uh, at the end of the credits talk that we do, I'll um, edit in the other two options I had, so... I'm just, I'm just telling you, just, uh, if you want to see what happens at the end of those ones, then uh, I, I'll, I'll put it in. Because Ken doesn't even need to be a part of it if he doesn't want to be. <laughs> Unless he wants to see. I like, I like how E-Fan fucking be, fights for the new divide. <laughs> I, I didn't get that line, because I got the line about what Red Prince was doing. It's like, was he a good guy? Who knows? Only the Red Prince knows. Yeah, that's what I got at and the end. And it told me about me, and I was like, oh, so it must have told you about... You must have shown you e fan then and said, like, well, then this is you. Yeah, no, I told you at the end, it's like, uh, the Red Prince was the divine. Did he sacrifice others? Was he a bitch? Kind of thing. It told me that... And he was like, and then, like, you, you returned as a god who failed to become divine. Did you attack it with dignity? Like, yeah. <laughs> I used a revive scroll. What, what, <laughs> what did it say about yeah, e fan for you? Well, remember, is that just like, uh, did you... T <laughs> did oh. you take the failure with dignity, or did you... <laughs> be a bitch about it. Well, it, it said for me that Ethan uh, decided to go fight for the new divine. And they said, like, uh, his spirit wolf is probably still in the forest or something. And I, and I laughed because I was like, yeah, you never fucking used that thing once. <laughs> <laughs> Some say his incarnate is still in the forest. Oh, shit. You gotta, you gotta watch the video when I put it up to see what it said for me. Because, like, the, the, yeah, the ending was different for both of us, sort of ish. And I guess the. Like, the, it seemed like a very. Um, it's a, it was a segmented ending, so I guess there's certain levels uh, to the ending, like, depending upon your actions. So I guess it's like one of those kinds of endings. Yeah. That's kind of nice, in that sense. Like, for Red Prince, it was like, did, did the Red Prince, uh, you know, was, how, how, how will he act as divine? Like, no, he's definitely a bastard. <laughs> yeah, so I was thinking of myself. I could just hear the game chugging, looking at, like, <laughs> hero tag, villain tag. Hmm. Doesn't know what to do. Uh, what'd you think of the game? Keeps good. Uh, best good game fun. I played in 2017. That's 2018, so it's a, maybe still the best game I played over these two years. Mm, quizzical. Fraught with a few bugs here and there, which I hope have been patched as we've been going. I mean, the game is ridiculously complicated, so the fact that, you know, had these bugs to begin with. Yeah, it's a real shame we didn't get to see Malady's quest. Um, okay, I, I need you to tell me. So I know I know what Beast's kind of personal storyline was. It was related to Queen Justina and stuff, which we never saw Queen Justina again. Um, we we did Sibyls, and then we did Red Princess. What the fuck was Efan supposed to be doing? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I assume it was related to the guy that we killed. The guy in the sawmill? Yeah, we killed him pretty much immediately as we saw him. Because, like, Sabeel. it was related to Sabeel's shit, and Sabeel killed him. I was like, alright, then... Yeah, no, Sabeel was like, yeah, fuck you guys, I want to talk to this guy. And, and then she just fucked him up, so... Like, I, I, all I know is that Efen was, like, a sad boy for... For using the, the well, Death, death, death Fog. He DNA. worked for the original Divine. He was Lucian's boy. Lucian told him to go deploy the Death Fog. He didn't know it was Death Fog, and it was Death Fog. I was like, ah, shit, Death Fog. Yeah, that's why I assumed when, when the Divine wanted to talk to you, I, did, I was just like, oh, this must be when your story kind of comes in. And then it didn't. At all. Well, I got to, I got to tell the Divine to go fuck himself. Is that? Yeah, I mean, I mean is that all you, is that all e is for? Just to tell people to fuck themselves? Just you wait ten years' time, e will tell my friends to go fuck himself, too. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, guess what I'm keeping those uh, Death Fog crates for? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to take this crate over to this guy? I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> take this crate over to like you know dwarves, all of them. Oh shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm banging the Go Elsa. take this to dwarf. <laughs> Go the guy. <laughs> Go take this to dwarf. Uh, anyways, the game, the game was overall it was very good. Um, it's not without my complaints. Um, obviously, I was whining a little bit during the game, uh, mostly regarding like. Just kind of like every every fucking fight having a teleporting mechanic. 
Yeah, that was, like, I mean, the only way to counter is having teleport it yourself. I mean, I put Erotic Wisp on Sibyl, and I thought that was, like, the best counter to it, but it didn't work in all cases. Um, what else was there? What else did I do? Also, the whole fact that I was originally planning to have Beast be a tank, mm -hmm. which he kind of did, was at the end of Guardian Angel, that kind of worked for that. But, yeah, no, t you can't taunt through armor, so it's not gonna work. Yeah, I'm not sure what I think about the armor system in this game. I didn't like it when I started, and I still don't think I like it that much now, because there's a couple things. The first thing is that um, I think that the play is definitely to specialize in one, because I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, if we had a mage in this party, this mage would basically be like... We, I mean, I think there's two ways of doing it. You have either a, full, a party that's like full-on kind of like physical kind of thing, or full-on magical, but if you split them up, it is potentially possible for you to say like, oh hey, let's let's have the two people focus on the people, the, the guy that, you know, has um, l less magic armor. So you, you kind of split your focus. But like when you're trying to focus down somebody, especially since a lot of our abilities benefited from... Um, it, it, like it all the control worked. stuff, like knockdown. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like you just want to you want to lower their armor and then do shit like vitality swap and turn them into a chicken and things like that. So I think that the system I, I understand it and in theory it sounded kind of okay, but because they wanted to fix the whole thing of oh you know we want we don't want you to be able to because what we did in Divinity Original Sin One was you just open up fights and uh, basically CC the fuck out of everything. I think I had Jayhan or something do that. Yeah, and like yeah. I got to like put points into bodybuilding and shit to try and resist it. Yes, yeah, because it, it was saving throws. That's what that game had. Um, and so it wasn't a good system, but this is worse, I would say. Because they, they, fine, they added the armor, which you stack armor now to resist the... So now it's more guaranteed to get it. But it, it worked more for the enemies and not for us, because for in most fights, like our armor didn't mean much. We were just like, oh shit, well, I'm knocked on the ground, so... You know, Ripperonis. That's just how that went down. I think Sibyl could have been glass cannoned. I think I could have made her do glass cannon, because I don't think her armor really mattered. Th thinking about it now. Because, um, yeah, we, we, we played a lot around Sibyl in this game. Because you made, um, you made a shield, you made a sword and board character, and then you, and then Ifan kind of went into, like, summoning slash support. What did you think about both of those playstyles, by the way? Um, I definitely think I wouldn't do the sword and board again. It just... The control abilities are nice, but you can have the control abilities and be like a two-handed knight guy. Yeah. The extra, sh like the shields up thing just wasn't really good enough in the end. Like, bouncing shield did a lot of damage, but that was my damage. Without that, I had no damage output, really. Nothing great. Red Prince did okay damage, but I think I could have definitely played around the fact he has a really high crit multiplier and gave him, like, guaranteed crits and stuff. Um, that's probably what I would have done a little bit differently. I, I know there was some guy that was really into skin graft, the one that resets all your cooldowns, but I never used it once. And it's because of the new AP point system, actually, I, I should mention. Because in this game, there's like, you, you just start with four AP points, and you can have up to six. But they really simplified that, because it's like, you know, I, I honestly felt like in most in most of my turns, I was like, well, I can't really do much. I do, I like, I'm either trying to move somewhere to get to somebody, or, you know, someone needs to be buffed or something, I don't know. It was, uh... It's weird. kind of like Dungeons & Dragons, kind of, because, like, it's like an attack is two points, and then a movement is, like, you know, one point. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, so I can use two points to do an attack, but then I've got two points, like, I can attack it again with that, or I could move around, or I could use all points to move, it's all more, like, but it's much more restrictive, because in the, in the first game, it was like, yeah, if I want more points, I just, like, I haste, I glass cannon, I do all that stuff. Like, you could build stats for it to get more uh, AP. Mm. Like, starting AP, max AP, uh, AP per turn. That's, that's, that's the other thing. So, the, my criticism for the teleporting thing. Because um, that, that threw... Okay, so I liked it in the original Sim 1 because a lot of it was... I, I, I can hear dialogue or music playing in the background. It's fucking me up now. Alright, anyways. Um... What was I saying? Okay, so the teleporting around stuff. So, this is so in Divinity Original Sin One, a lot of the, the game was about manipulating the battlefield. Uh, you know, like okay, you make a fire over here, you make it like an ice sheet over here, so the skeletons have to slip to get over to you and things like that. 
Um, yeah, it was so much more tactical. Yeah, it was. It was like yeah. You, in this you game, position. like we, when did we ever really care about services? Really, never. I mean, most of the time we were just standing in necrofire, and then I was like, well, we can't do anything about necrofire. <laughs> like, because every time we try and bless it or like remove it, it's so clunky, right? Because like, yeah, you have to bless it and then bless it again. And and that doesn't stop it from becoming necrofire again. I think. Well, bless it then rain. It's like, and then you've got like what, a point left for that turn. And then it just comes back. Like, you're, but the thing is, like, you're so limited in AP points that you never want to do that. Like, because you'd rather just be killing people. Like, why get rid of the surfaces? Just suck it up, stand in the fucking fire, and kill it kills things. That's 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 pretty much how I, I played the game. Not, not to forget the big the big bads that have like all have like what like sixteen AP or something. There's like. I'm gonna do everything. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Drink fucking eight potions while I'm invisible. Fucking hell. Ugh. So I would say in in depth, the game lost a lot of its depth in terms of the tattoo combat, especially because like I was like, especially early on in the game, I was like, yeah, I'm like I have Sabiel and like I think at the time I didn't have tactical retreat, so I was like, okay, let's start this fight. You know, it's the first. I think it was the one with the first Void Woken we ever saw. We're like, okay, we're gonna start this fight. You know, Subiel's gonna be on the high ground. You know, all this stuff, and then we start the fight, and it's like, oh yeah, and everything spawns around us. And <laughs> jumps like, yeah, it's everything like, spawns. Oh, and and, and I'm thinking, no, no, the thing is, at that moment, I was like, I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, like they all spawn. I'm like, I'm like, this is still good. I mean, there's only one person besides Sabiel. It, it doesn't matter. Sabiel will be okay. Sabiel will just, you know, rain hell with her fucking hide advantage and stuff like that. And then, and then, and then, like the the moment I got really mad was when I think it was the Void Woken just fucking did like a blitz attack onto the top. I'm like, fuck. And then it had like a whole bunch of extra moves. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, he did. that wasn't even the end of his fucking. Turn. Well, I think I think the most angry you've ever been was the uh, the Black Pits, like with the the guy who's being hanged or some shit. Yeah. There was a couple. Uh, tests. That that took us so long. Yeah, but that one I think we just we did it before we were ready. We needed a couple more levels and a couple. We did before ready, but it was also the fact that everything jumped up. Yeah. Uh, the check the the turkey. No, it was chicken. It was chicken. They kept dying. Just, and never ending and never fun. ending necker fire. But that's I think I think it was that moment we basically figured out the game, which is like just fuck surfaces, like who cares about surfaces? Just kill stuff. That like that's that's all you can do, and and then we I think we pretty much had no trouble throughout the rest of the game when we played with that mentality, which which it's a problem because as I said, you can see that it was it was added to the game to add to like the tacticalness, but it's just an element we ignored, like that's pretty much how we went down with that. And maybe it'll go differently if we were doing magic. I but that's been all magic party. I mean, well, it's mostly magic. I mean, I wanna. I want to play this game again, and I want to try Louise out, and, uh, and I also want to do. Um, I, I would like to try an all magic party because I think I think that's the other thing is we didn't have a lot of healing abilities because Sabiel had one, but she, I never want to use it because I'm like, why heal when well, I can kill? Ethan, actually, I get to say how I felt about Ethan's build. Mm -hmm. uh, Summoner is definitely good, and I would definitely put it on a support or kind of like someone who can just like. Like, as uh, support or hunt, uh, the huntsman, like the ranger kind of build. Did you feel that summoning fell off? Because that's what people say. Uh, uh, kind of towards the end, but not so much that I think it's bad. Just it kind of leveled out. Yeah, because you, you start basically playing like a more summoner. Uh, you, you, you would start with your summon, and then you'd spend all your other turns using support abilities, I know. Because I feel like the summon was roughly on par with Red Prince, but Red Prince had more utility to him. And obviously more health, more damage. But like he was, considering he was an addition to Efan being support, I feel it's pretty good. Mm. Although I'd say the totem definitely kind of petered off towards the end because I don't know they just didn't do enough. Yeah, you didn't. And it's always like them. I could I could make a totem or I could have two extra points to do buffs or healing. Mm. So yeah, but yeah, Efan kind of... had like very high high fist. Although <laughs> I I. Regret not going to that last fight with mass cleanse wounds or other, like healing <laughs> abilities. I just I neglected to get it. Yeah, for me there was always some abilities I wasn't using. Uh, that that I just I I I kept on my barks and like there'll be one day where I'll want to use this and I just never did. Uh, I mean, Farsight was one of those ones as well. You know, it's just like I had it, and then every time I was kind of like, you know, I I don't really need it because I can hit everything I need to. And so, like, what what benefit does it really add to me? Because five, what is five meters? Five meters is nothing. It's even five meters. It feels like three. 
Oh, maybe three. Yeah, three three's like I mean it's a little bit of distance, but I mean maybe I would have like been nothing. able to hit uh the god or for what's the guy's name? Brachus? I maybe would have been able to hit Brachus. Brachus or the Kraken? No, we weren't supposed to hit the Kraken. It's like I said. I assumed right, which is the fact that Malay characters cannot hit the Kraken, so he wasn't he was never the intended target. So it would we the fight was won basically by Lucian killing <laughs> killing Brachus actually. I would I'd definitely say though in the future, or that just the overall feeling for the game is that melee is definitely well, not melee but physical is definitely the way to go. Oh, we haven't done there's magic. so much. Well, I, I I know we haven't done magic, but just like when you when you go physical, you don't really have to worry about physical resistance because that doesn't really exist except for that uh, one thing, yeah. right? Yeah, you're talking about like their resistances. Yeah, because when you go when you start yeah. doing magic, you have to worry about elements. Uh, elements. I said it so weirdly. Elements. So like so if you have a party of like okay I'm gonna go fire magic Mike's gonna go like water and lightning I'll go fire and something else it's like yeah we've got elements covered but it's like okay that guy's weak to fire but rest of everything else so everyone else just like sits on their fucking thumbs hmm it, it may like you're you're actually right the, the, that may alone well the thing is I think the idea would be you'd have one person into um, into magic. Like, in, in a balanced party, you'd have, like, let's say you have the thief, you have either the sword and board person or the two-hander, you have the ranger, and then you have the mage, right? And then, like, and then you can use... I think, ideally, in a balanced party, you'd want someone like Ifan, because, summoning aside, he had all the support stuff for magic, but I also could have gotten some other things, like, I could have got some, like, the, the ice abilities, too. Mm. So, for fights where it's like, oh... Magic, again, it's not a magic armor fight. This is like, this is more of a we need to do physical armor damage. I'll, I'll heal. I like do all this other shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure. Like, it's just, it's, it's weird how this game is designed, and I don't think it was necessarily great. Uh, in, in, in just in the armor systems, because as I said, it wasn't. Because you are, you are absolutely correct in the fact that like. That makes the mages even less effective with all those random resistances that you have to concern yourself with. Um, I, I don't know. As I said, we'll, we'll we'll see when we do our second run of the game. Because there there are some times where it's like, yeah, okay, um, the classes can be versatile. Like a range can be versatile because they can use special arrows to do what elemental damage. I have special. So arrows. like a ranger would work in a mage party, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, oh yeah, because elemental arrow heads as well. That would also, to work. It's like I said, I, I'm pretty sure the way they intended you to play the game was like, let's say there's there's one guy with like three thousand physical and then one ten thousand magic armor, and so then it's your mage's turn, and you basically go like, well, maybe I don't want to hit that guy with my spells. Maybe I want to hit this other fucking guy, which has the opposite, which is like, you know, ten thousand physical and three thousand magical. So then you focus your efforts on that guy, but like. Eventually, there's going to be a bit of inefficiency there because you're going to be in like a position where you're like, well, I can only hit the guy with high magical armor, so I'm literally wasting my turn. So maybe I'll buff my allies instead yeah, or something. I, I was in that a lot of times with Ethan. Remember, like every time I was like, yeah, but I have a wand, so I do magic damage. <laughs> it's like I can't kill him. I, I just got to do nothing. Yeah, buff. yeah. You basically you basically didn't because you could never get physical damage with the. Uh, oh, I, I had the punch. Build. That was all I had. You had the punch. The J hand punch. So, I, but you know, I, like I, I, we can't really say for sure because we don't. We're we're just like speculating because we haven't actually done a run like that. But it just it's just the way I, I think it would go. Um, but you'd have to play the full game like that. And I'm sure there's some people that have done that. We just decided to go like, I, I don't know what point it was in the game that we decided to just basically go like all physical. But I don't know because I because you know you know Sabil had like. 15,000 fucking elemental arrows that I never used, and you had the grenades too. Yeah, I, I, the grenades legitimately caught like like 70% of my weight. <laughs> you, you know, you, know, you fucking basically retired with all that money. I got to be the new divine, but you got to buy your own tropical island. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get to go like a fucking. I, I put a fucking potion shop, alright? <laughs> uh. I don't know, as I said, I really like the game, and thank you to Wavemaster Bunt again, who uh, gifted this to me and Ken so we could run through it. Yes. It was a glorious game. 
as I said, it's it's I liked it so much. I'm gonna do a second run. Uh, I, with Ken, so like we'll we'll do it after all the videos go up, and maybe like a little bit more of a break, we'll start streaming a second run. So I mean, depending upon when you see this, uh, I have a Twitch archive, like a Twitch archive on YouTube, which you can see it as well. Oh, there you go. That's the end of the game. Uh, you can you can probably see it there, see the parts, skim through it or whatever. Uh, we'll we'll be doing another little mini run of this. Well, not mini because this this is what well over this is not, well not well over but well at least we'll know what we're doing probably like, probably know some ways we can just skim through. Yeah, this is like a hundred. Uh, what we'll we going to play again on uh, tactician difficulty again? We played we already played on tactician. The only one up. Yeah, but I was actually going to play on it again. <laughs> of course I would. Why not? Okay, that's one sure because like you know we've uh, had the whole. I'm kind of curious to see if the other difficulty doesn't have everything teleporting at you. It's uh, curious. That's a good question, but. But I think on the long run, it's probably like tactician difficulty is probably better. The thing is, the problem is then you can teleport everywhere because it is a part of the game. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, like yeah, Ethan teleporting shit. That was like that was clutch. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like we we were doing that, and then and then they would just teleport back to us. So it didn't matter. <laughs> oh god. But it was it was a fun game. It was fun. So, oh well. Anything else? I don't know. I think I'm good. All right, thanks for, for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you guys for whatever. Oh, you know what? Actually, there's one other thing I want to mention. The music for this game was top-notch. Like, one of the best soundtracks for a game I've ever heard. I concur. Very good. Very good. I, I, I don't know. I think the guy who did Divinity 1... This is not the guy who did Divinity 1's uh, soundtrack, by the way. Because uh, he died. So this is another guy. And he did really well. That's good. morbid. I, I mean, I heard about it, so it was a sad story. All right, that, that's all I got. That's all I got now. Bye. Goodbye. See you next time. I don't know when. All right, guys. As I promised, I'm going to show the rest of the story. So let's do give back the source to all the peoples. Released divinity into a world when everyone is divine. No one is divine. So it ended. A tale that began with my own ill-fated attempt to rid the world of the God Woken. When the dust settled, no new divine had risen. Instead, all source was released into the world for all the people and every creature to share. Everyone was now a sorcerer. And united, the peoples of Rivalon pushed back the God King into the very depths of the Void. This ushered in a new golden age of peace and prosperity. But alas, it was not to last. With many greedy for wealth, power and position, the struggle soon began anew. Source, the very language of creation, was used in violence once more. The never-ending contest for power continued. As for me, my last hope of ever being freed of the God King's terrible tyranny faded when the God Woken failed to seal the veil. An eternity of pain and suffering is mine, in service of the King, until the day I am freed, the day the God King returns. All right, well, by the way, Ken isn't here, so, uh, fuck off, Ken. I'll go see if anyone has uh, anything interesting to say right now. Let's skim through it, just to show you guys. I've got to admit, I'm all about returning the power to the people, but I never could have seen this one coming. Ask if he has any more stories, one for the sea or road. He eyes you slyly, but consents to one final tale. The beast of the sea rose triumphant, guiding his fellow god woken from an island prison to a final hurrah. He boarded the Lady Vengeance, now inexplicably whole due to magic a beast could never understand, and returned to his homeland. 
Then began the process of rebuilding, restoring trust, handing out hope, serving his people. Huh. Guess that one doesn't really end with a bang. But that's all right. You know, it's a work in progress. Course of all, eh? Bold move, I'll grant you that. I didn't think anyone considered the little people anymore. Uh, what does he think about the new world we helped usher into existence? Hmm. I don't know yet. Perhaps peace will reign and all will be equal. Or perhaps you've bestowed great power on undeserving children and turned them loose on each other. Time will tell, I'm sure. All right, let's take our leave. I'm buzzing. I don't know how else to describe it. But what you did, I want to say it was brave. Maybe it was, but it wasn't right. Gareth is still. For a moment, his mind wanders to memories of friends and enemies, of malady and magisters, of demons and divinity. He is then present once more, though hardly animated. The people of Rivalon will call you their savior. The power is in them, in all of them. And there will come a time when they rebel, and the price will be high. Insists that's a bunch of nonsense. He gave him a generous gift, that of equality. Equality. Power shared among both the evil and the good. The light and the dark. The sky and the earth. Equal source light, yes, but not equality. You've blessed them and cursed them with a single choice. You didn't reveal your altruism. You revealed your greed. Wow, apparently that guy thinks I'm a dick for what I did. So, here we are, my darling. Sorcerers like everyone else in the realm. A bit boring to be so unexceptional all of a sudden, isn't it? Then again, I suppose they can't fit all of us in Fort Joy. Well, that Fort Joy seems like a lifetime ago. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Good times, though. We've come to the brink and back again so many times on this adventure. I only hope what awaits the world is something more equitable. A bit more sun, a bit less rain. Even though I love the rain. What are you going to do now? I'll serve my people as best I can. I am theirs now and they are mine. But I won't forget what we shared. I'll never forget that. We love each other after all. A kiss and oh, how sweet she tastes. Let's do good, both of us. We may as well serve as examples to the god we call our friend. See Louise changed. The ghost of Losa hums a nope, soft tune. She did not. Maybe Fane's different now. I suppose it's time for me to explore a new form of eternity. Alright, well, let's uh, talk to the ship. It gives me almost as much pleasure to speak to you as it does to be whole again. Uh, glad to see all the trouble behind you rather than in front of you. I cannot say whether the future brings peace or pain, but I will always be an ally to those that carry source, to those whose blood is of the heroes of old. And so, as always, I am at the ready. Okay, time to depart. You look out to the endless beyond. The sun's light plays upon the waves, just as it always did. The sails flutter in the wind, just as they always will. And yet, something is different. You are different. And with a start, you realize where you must go next. You speak the command to the Lady Vengeance, and another chapter begins. The world was at peace. At least, for now. With its significance as the seat of divinity diminished, arcs fell into decline, and within seven generations had emptied. Few were as prepared for the new world as the lizardkin of the ancient empire. With power spread equally throughout the world, the advantage lay with those who knew how to steal it, and at this, the lizards excelled. The dwarven Godwoken returned to the kingdom and assumed the dead queen's throne. The new king ruled with grace and integrity, 
until two years later, when a resentful courtier stabbed him to death with a mutton fork. With their power returned, the elves reclaimed their lands from the death fog and began to rebuild. Soon they would split as two factions sought power, one to bring back the trees, the other to bring back the scions. A dwarven joke did the rounds. It ends with the punchline, so Lucian dropped the death fog on them again. Only Sabeel could bring the elves together once more. And in a dark forest on the far side of a desert, well beyond the high seas, the Black Ring came together once more. The island of Fort Joy, the old redoute of the Source King Bracchus Rex, was turned over to the people of Driftwood to use as they wished. They turned it into a holiday resort. Reaper's Coast prospered. The fisheries returned, and the fertile farmlands produced the greatest harvests the surviving farmers had ever seen. Blood Moon Island became particularly fecund, its soil producing the greatest crops. A particularly crimson-fleshed orange grown on the island became a delicacy across half the world. The black pits took fire, the oil there burns still. Driftwood became a centre of industry, trade and transport. Brayton Barnes became a mayor. Years later, he was undone by a scandal involving three prominent envoys from the ancient empire and a 25-pound halibut. He retired in disgrace, his pension intact. The Nameless Isle had vanished. Although only open water remained, by instinct, ships would steer clear. None of the captains could articulate why. Millennia later, adventurers would come in search of the legendary divine city of Arx and the crypt of the great Lucian. None would pass the path of blood. So Gareth thanked the surviving seekers for their service and gave them their freedom. Disillusioned with the rising chaos, he set out alone to find a new purpose. He would never stop seeking. Young Han went into the theater and became one of the realm's most popular actors. Almira and Mihaili settled in an abandoned homestead. The locals liked and respected Almira. She never wanted for help, and deals always fell to her favor. Outsiders were often suspicious, but no local would speak against her. Having performed the greatest act of necromancy in history, Tarquin found the new world unchallenging. He became obsessed with rumors of another plane of existence. One day he vanished and was never seen again. With the source released to the world, Ahu the wizard spent more and more time as a cat. One day he decided he would not change back. With Amadia silent, the priestess Gratiana left the swamps and re-entered the world. With more undead than ever before, she founded an abbey in the Dragonspine Mountains, offering them shelter from hatred and fear. Mordas scratched out a living, ending up as a short-order cook. After an epiphany arising from the phrase, sunny side up, he started a religion. Upon his death from food poisoning, all three of his followers committed suicide. 
Jehan, the demon hunter, found himself at a loose end. So, he opened a museum of demonic artifacts. After it burned down, with Jehan inside, witnesses claimed that the flames were the color of blood. As the forests grew anew, and the elves were equals at last, Sahela shared elven knowledge of the source with the world. But some elves disagreed and plotted against her. The mother would have to choose sides. Chief amongst her opponents was Tova, Sahela's own mother. The Beast of the Sea returns to the Dwarven Kingdom, this time as a lawmaker. After a very public blunder, Marcus eschewed political power and returned to the sea. The Beast and the Lady Vengeance sail on. With a small band of elves, Ifan Ben Mezd replanted the lost elven forests. After the first fresh shoots broke the earth, he disappeared and was never seen again. Some say Afrit, his soul wolf, walks the forest still. As the new mother, Sibyl found a great forest and founded a new elven homeland. Elves flocked to her and worshiped her as a goddess. Sibyl swore never to kill again, but once in a while she'd look at her needle and smile. And then there was you. You returned to the world a sorcerer among many. Your future was yours to decide. Did you accept your new status with humility? Only you know the truth. Only you know if you atone for your sins. All right, so that's it for that one. Uh, and I'm gonna now load up the, it again and see the other one. And it did change enough, actually, so that's that's pretty interesting. All right, we're back over here, and I'm gonna try the third option, allow yourself and all the world to be purged of its source. And so it ended. A tale that began with my own ill-fated attempt to rid the world of the God Worker. Dallas the Hammer, the Secret Eternal, purged the God Woken and used the Source to close the Veil to the Void. The world was saved. Statues in memory of the God Woken who sacrificed their source were erected all across Rivelon. They would never be forgotten. The God Woken themselves became silent monks. Dallas cared for their bodies, the empty vessels that had once carried their formidable souls, until they succumbed to the ravages of time. They were buried in the crypt where Lucian once stole the source from the gods and where the god Woken made the ultimate sacrifice. As for me, the god Woken sacrifice severed the link that bound the sworn to the god king and I was finally free. To atone for my sins, I spent the rest of my days taking care of the sick and elderly telling the story of the God Woken, that the world may never forget the greatest heroes Rivalon had ever seen. Okay, back on the ship here again. Apparently we did not quite sacrifice ourselves, or here. All right. Good. Dwarf has to say. brushes detritus from his beard. 
I know it's the same old sea breeze up. The eyes eat the beast of this yeah, end to get up. That's good saying. Uh, let's see. I always thought that those who resorted to self-sacrifice were lacking in imagination. But I must admit, I was rather noble of you. Reduced all source points. What, what, what does it make of the new state of the world? A world without source is one that will need individuals of wit and intellect. A sharp mind is the only magic now. I believe I shall enjoy this new world very much. That is the question, isn't it? Uh, no, I intend at all. to seek them out. All right, what's this guy got? The purging that once silenced you remains on your mind as you approach Gareth. You are grateful for Malady's miraculous touch. Without it, there would be no you. Amazing, I'm still here. That you're here, and that you might still speak. That Lucian. Uh, so you would be. You thought you'd be happy to serve Lucian once more. Aside from a single blink, Gareth stands remarkably still. Time. Time has a way of changing someone. Lucian did not start as the man he became. Nor is the man I am now the same as him that once served at the side of a divine. Lucian doesn't need me. And believe me when I say, I no longer need him. Thank you for the service uh, to the Seekers and all the have, who have de depended upon him. I only did what I was meant to do. I don't deserve thanks. I gave only the bare minimum, and still I strayed quite far. Gareth shakes his head vigorously in response to his own emotions. Self-pity is as dangerous as any man I have battled, Alexander included. In this new world, this world without the seven gods, it's a foe I plan to defeat for good. I wonder what he'll do next. I find a way to fit. I wasn't just content to lurk in Lucian's shadow. I was his shadow. Now I stand in the sun as my own man. I just don't know who that man is. And so I find out. My goal is to have a goal, if that makes sense at all. And if it doesn't, well, that's all I've got. Oh, Sabeel. How's Sabeel doing in the new world? Darling, you're here, and I'm here, if just barely. Thank the gods, or whomever, for Malady. Uh, what do you think about Lucian? I'm curious to see how long he'll last. He's a good man, which makes him a dubious god. I suppose in the end, I want more from life than to belong to a stale pantheon. I'll serve my people as best I can. I am theirs now, and they are mine. But I won't forget what we shared. I'll never forget that. We love each other after all. A kiss, and oh, how sweet she tastes. Let's do good, both of us. We may as well serve as examples to the god we call our friend. The ghost of Losa hums a soft. I suppose it's time for me to. Nope. Guess we're done. It gives me almost as much pleasure to speak to you as it does to be whole again. All right. So you got to see all the trouble behind us. I cannot. Yeah, I am at the ready. Time to depart. And with a start. At last, the world was at peace. As the races united behind Lucian, Arx remained the center of power. The ancient Lizard Empire opened its gates, the houses disbanded, and the Empire adopted a pluralist quasi-democracy. Anyone could vote for whoever they pleased, as long as the House of Shadows approved. The Dwarven Godwoken returned to the kingdom and assumed the Dead Queen's throne. The new king ruled with grace and integrity until two years later, when a resentful courtier stabbed him to death with a mutton fork. Lucian made amends to the elves, 
He gave them lands and vast riches from the coffers of the old divine order. But the elves never forgave him. They would not trust humans again. And in a dark forest on the far side of a desert, well beyond the high seas, the Black Ring came together once more. The island of Fort Joy, the old redoute of the Source King Bracchus Rex, was turned over to the people of Driftwood to use as they wished. They turned it into a holiday resort. Reaper's Coast prospered. The fisheries returned, and the fertile farmlands produced the greatest harvests the surviving farmers had ever seen. Blood Moon Island became particularly fecund, its soil producing the greatest crops. A particularly crimson-fleshed orange grown on the island became a delicacy across half the world. The Black Pits took fire. The oil there burns still. Driftwood became a center of industry, trade, and transport. Brayton Barnes became a mayor. Years later, he was undone by a scandal involving three prominent envoys from the ancient empire and a 25-pound halibut. He retired in disgrace, his pension intact. The Nameless Isle had vanished. Although only open water remained, by instinct, ships would steer clear. None of the captains could articulate why. Arx became a great metropolis, famed for its prosperity, its culture, its diversity, and the willingness of its denizens to stab each other in the back for the slightest advantage. Sir Gareth thanked the surviving seekers for their service and gave them their freedom. Disillusioned with peace, he set out alone to find a new purpose. He would never stop seeking. Young Han went into the theatre and became one of the realm's most popular actors. Almira and Mihaili settled down on the farm. The locals liked and respected Almira. She never wanted for help, and deals always fell to her favour. She presumed she had them in thrall. The truth was, they just liked her. Having performed the greatest act of necromancy in history, Tarquin found the new world unchallenging. He became obsessed with rumours of another plane of existence. One day he vanished and was never seen again. Ahu the wizard became one of Lucian's most trusted advisers once more. He always knew that something had changed in the divine. He never discovered what that was, or, if he did, he never said a word. With Amadia silent, the priestess Gratiana left the swamps and re-entered the world. She founded an abbey in the Dragonspine Mountains, offering the last of the undead shelter from fortune hunters, novelty seekers and ghouls. Mordus scratched out a living, ending up as a short-order cook. After an epiphany arising from the phrase, sunny side up, he started a religion. Upon his death from food poisoning, all three of his followers committed suicide. Jahan the demon hunter found himself at a loose end, so he opened a museum of demonic artifacts. He made a fortune. With Lucian in power, Sahela took the elves away from the world. They grew strong once more, amidst the trees of the regrown home forest. 
only the new mother kept Sahela's plans for revenge from fruition. But the mother had a secret weapon. Tova, Sahela's mother, keeps Sahela's anger at bay. Lucian returned as divine, united the races, and became Lord Emperor of all Rivalon. Only Dallas knew that he was entirely powerless. Dallas and you. The Eternal, now known as Dallas, was a secret advisor to Lucian and to his successors. For eons she would walk in the world and would outlive the peoples and all and wander alone amongst the dying stars. The Beast of the Sea returned to the Dwarven Kingdom, not as a rebel, but as a lawmaker. Merciful and wise, he led the Dwarves into an age of prosperity. His grave looks out over the sea. With a small band of elves, Ifan Ben Mezd replanted the lost elven forests. After the first fresh shoots broke the earth, he disappeared and was never seen again. Some say Afrit, his soul wolf, walks the forests still. As the new mother, Sabil found a great forest and founded a new elven homeland. Elves flocked to her and worshipped her as a goddess. Sabil swore never to kill again, but once in a while she'd look at her needle and smile. And then there was you. You returned to the world as one more kin among many. Your future was yours to decide. Did you accept your new status with humility? Or did you rebel? Only you know the truth. Only you know if you atone for your sins. All right, that is the super end of Divinity Original Sin 2. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and take care. Goodbye.